This episode is brought to you by MyTC Community, a private membership for the ambitious real estate professional that needs a safe space to learn, grow, and build their confidence to design and live out their dream life. Visit MyTCCommunity.com to join today. Welcome or welcome back to the Transaction Care Podcast. My name is Lillian Hernandez, but you can call me Lily, like the flower, because we are learning and growing together. And this is episode number 33. New episodes are released every Monday, so make sure you head to transactioncarepodcast.com to stream old episodes as well as join my TC Weekly newsletter. Let's get into it. In today's episode, we're talking about self-care. I titled it Care for Yourself, Care for Your Wealth. If you listen to the show, you know that's typically how I close out every episode. But today, I wanted to bring it to the forefront. Self-care. Three key points I want to touch on in this episode go as follows. Day in life, rituals, routines, the good, the consistent, as well as the chaotic works in progress. And I will answer the question I love asking my guests, how do you care for yourself outside of work? And of course, as I'm talking about these matters, start checking in with yourself. Are you on track? Are you on your track? Do you even want to be on track? (laughs) We are out here reframing our minds, reprogramming, redefining the quote unquote norms on our terms. And on that note, finally, I want to talk about how having a budget does not mean you're broke. So before we take a deep dive into today's discussion, coming up August, Tashina Pine interview, Sam Hayes, Michelle Martinez, Allison Couric, so much more. August is going to be jam-packed. So make sure you are subscribed and following the Transaction Care podcast so you know exactly when new episodes drop and these interviews are live because when I say, what is bigger than a masterclass? Whatever that is, that's what these interviews involved. It was just so much fun. I enjoyed talking to each and every one of them and I learned so much and I feel like you are gonna leave every episode just uplifted, inspired, encouraged, all of the above. So Transaction Care Podcast, make sure you are subscribed and you might as well binge some previous episodes. We're only on episode 33. You still have time to catch up, guys. (laughs) And the best way to get in contact with me is to join my free TC Weekly newsletter. Just go to transactioncare.com, enter your name and email, and then bam, you'll be a part of my TC Weekly newsletter. It's that simple. But my people within the community also get discounts, deals, announcements before it goes public here on the podcast or on YouTube or social media. We work together. If they have questions, we set up meetings. It's amazing. So my TC Weekly newsletter, join. You don't want to miss out. And did you know I have a YouTube channel? (laughs) For those that may have found me from YouTube, I am finally uploading video content for the Transaction Care podcast onto YouTube. Full episodes with videos so you get to see the faces of the guests that I've interviewed as well as mine. If you haven't already seen it on my YouTube, go subscribe at Transaction Care. And exclusive, I will be creating a separate channel for the podcast exclusively just for clips and shorts. That's it. So stay tuned for that next announcement as well when that goes live my tc community is live and i will be releasing my tc launch program soon you have to be either a part of my tc weekly newsletter or already a paid member in my tc community to know exactly when that is dropping because i'm going to be giving you the keys i'm going to be giving you blueprints and providing you with the two decades worth of experience that i have that has allowed me to press forward in this industry and maintain whether it was the busy season, the slow season. It's all about staying ready so you don't have to get ready. So make sure you head to mytccommunity.com. And the platform also includes monthly calendar access to book one-on-one sessions with me directly. There's nowhere else you can book time with me at this point, only through my TC community. So whether you just want one-on-one training or you want 
step-by-step -step courses or trainings. It's all there for you to access 24 seven. I mean, full transparency, you can't access me directly 24 seven, but like I said, you will see my calendar within the platform. So let's talk about it, people, self-care. What does that look like for you? Let me know, send me a DM, comment. Also leave a rating for the show. I, I would truly appreciate that. But self-care, let's talk about it. It can be a very broad topic because there can be different subcategories within this topic. For me, I'm gonna talk about mostly what my day in the life consists of, how I'm caring for myself outside of the big projects like business and work and you know things of that nature. And money, let's talk about it because money is, ugh, whether we want to admit it or not, it's important. We need it. It can get the best of us. It could be the best of us. Wherever you stand with money and your relationship with it, let's talk about it because I'm reading this amazing book, I Will Teach You How to Be Rich, and this is no ad. I'm not promoting it. I'm not forcing you to read it, but I'm also not saying you shouldn't read it <laughs> especially if you are in a place in your life where you just need to get back to the fundamentals but we'll get into that later I want to talk about day in life my rituals my routines the good and consistent the chaotic works in progress so how do I start my day so I have my non-negotiables that no matter what time I wake up throughout the day, I have to do these before I do anything. Otherwise, I've noticed the days that I've skipped all of this, I am just not myself. I feel imbalanced and what that entails for me. And I've adjusted this to my needs and my lifestyle over the years. But basically, I always wake up with gratitude. I thank God for a new day, for the opportunity. I think starting your day off with gratitude is one of the best ways you could start the day because if you know the rest of your day or week or month is going to be overwhelming or chaotic and you feel like things are out of control, take time each day, whether it's 10 seconds, 10 minutes, an hour to start just listing all the things you're grateful for. Grateful for your voice, grateful for each breath, every time you blink, every sound that you hear, for the blankets that are covering you. It could be just down to the simplest things, you know, to the hair on top of your head. Just if you're struggling out there, I have found that just being grateful every single morning helps me to just start my day on a better on a stronger foundation versus just jumping out of bed and going to do things that are, you know, that other people are telling me to do or that is going to distract me from who I am and what the things I need to process and feel. So after I kind of wake up, you know, get the crest out of my eyes and freshen up, you know, I lead with gratitude. I try not to touch my phone, but in the event that I do reach for my phone, I'm not getting on social media. I'm not checking my bank accounts quite yet, <laughs> but I am looking for the apps that give me guidance or just provide me some ease into my day. And for me, I like to just read the Bible verse of the day. I'm not a big Bible reader, but it does help to get a different perspective of you know, how to go about my day. And I read the daily Bible verse. Then I read like a devotional online. It's like a daily devotional website. Uh, and then after that, I like to read from a daily devotional book I got from an elephant exchange for, for Christmas one day. I knew no one else wanted it. So I just kind of bit the bullet and was like, okay, I'll take it. So other people can have quote unquote fun gifts. But in actuality, there are no mistakes. It was meant for me and I'm glad I, I grabbed it as a gift. But I like to do all of that, honestly, before I even look at an email, before I leave my house, you know, and then after I kind of do that to set the tone, I then go into journaling, reading, meditation. Now, the three of these things, if I can get them all done within one morning, it's honestly just so much better for my mental health. Um, but 
if I can get at least one of them in in the morning, that's great because I know I have the rest of the day to squeeze one of those things in, especially if I'm very overwhelmed. I just started meditating and that has been some a practice that I want to continue to implement into my life and I'm still learning how to do it and there are different ways I guess you can meditate. But for me, it's like if I know there's a part of my life where I'm super overwhelmed, say for instance, this podcast and oh crap, I don't have an episode for the next Monday. I don't have an interview lined up. What am I going to talk about? And my mind is thinking about, oh my God, I have to maintain the YouTube. I got to make sure my TC business is, is going, you know, how can I get sponsorships? How can I make money, you know, doing this? Or how can I spend more time with family and friends? And meditation helps me to quiet all the noise. And for me, I zone in on the one thing I need to focus on, or maybe I need more clarity on. So if it's the podcast, I'll usually set a timer for like 20 minutes just to get, that's what I have found has worked best for me as I'm introducing meditation into my daily schedule. But I'll sit down. It usually takes me about five minutes for my mind to truly just sink in and, and relax and turn off, turn off all that noise. And then once I zone in on, okay, podcast, then I listen to the thoughts that are coming in. I listen to how my body is reacting. I listen to the emotions and the feelings that are, are arising, you know, whatever the case, whatever experience I'm having in that moment. And I don't know, something happens where I just, I find that clarity and that stillness and in that silence. And that's what I love meditation for. And I, I just recently introduced it into my, my weekly, I would say more weekly. It hasn't become a daily practice yet, practice yet, but I definitely meditate on a weekly basis for a minimum 20 minutes because the first five to 10 minutes, it's mostly you just quieting the noise in your brain and in your body. And of course, journaling and reading. I talk about journaling all the time. I cannot stress how important journaling is. It was my personal choice and introduction into truly working on my mental health. This has been an ongoing journey. I would say I seriously started taking my mental health um, again more seriously about six years ago where I just felt like, all right, new things are changing. Things are shifting. You know, people are coming in and out of my life. These big events are occurring. Am I prepared? What do I want moving forward? How do I envision my life? And journaling has helped me to really sort through a lot of that chaos throughout my day and throughout my life. And it's also just a nice practice to, to be writing, you know, to put pen to paper because I'm at my computer typing all day. I'm sure many of you are as well out there that are TCs that just are behind our desk looking at screens day in and day out. It's just nice to exercise parts of my brain that I don't typically exercise throughout the day because I'm just, again, typing. So it's also nice. I like to use pen and paper. If I'm on the go, I'll use um, like my notes app and just create a, you know, journal entry that way. Um, but for the most part, journaling, the, the longest I'll go without doing journaling is maybe like two to three days, you know, unless I'm traveling for a long period of time. A lot of my morning routine is kind of thrown off, but typically journaling is one of those just like non-negotiables in my life in terms of routines and rituals. And that is it's what keeps me grounded all of these practices and you know that's what has prepared me to get comfortable again with working out and introducing fitness back into my life because a year or two ago I was definitely like 30 40 pounds heavier than I am today and it's and it's not so much about the pounds but it's just the lifestyle I was living didn't align with the vision and the goals that I had. And I've always been athletic. I've always been, played sports and did stuff like that. So it was a reality check for me once I did lose the weight. Some of it was intentional. Some of it was just, you know, due to getting my teeth fixed and having to not, you know, not being able to eat for long periods of time, uh, getting sick from traveling um that kind of helped me to lose the weight but it was like once I realized like oh 
yeah, I need to maintain this. Something in my mind shifted. And I think that was a matter of, it was a result of having done all of the work, the emotional and mental work behind the scenes with prayer, reading, journaling, meditation. I found a new space for me to accept fitness as something fun. I like to call it playing outside because I'll, I'll, I don't have a gym membership as much as I love lifting weights and doing squats. It gets boring. It really does. So I had to create ways that I can be active and still have fun. So I'll walk to the gym. <laughs> There's a gym in my neighborhood. I don't go to it, but it's, it forces me to get my steps in. So I'll walk to like the neighborhood gym and then I'll walk back home. I get fresh air, I get my steps in, get my cardio, I get some clarity, or I can just listen to my favorite songs for at least 30 minutes out of the day. I also love playing basketball. And that's one thing that I've incorporated back into my life, which I haven't done in over a decade. I'll take my basketball, go to the court and just shoot around, have fun, make silly videos. It's really a good time. So when I talk about designing your dream life, not everything is attached to a paycheck. My dream life to me is like, okay, I have me time. I have work time. I have family friends time. I have study learning time. And I just have miscellaneous, random, sporadic time for anything that could occur at any given moment. And for context, I should mention that I am single, no kids, but I do help raise my nephew. So I have somewhat of a routine in terms of like getting up early and having to take him to school. And then I usually do my morning routine based around that schedule. Because right now it's summertime, everything is kind of all over the place. So the chaotic things that are a work in progress for me right now has been my sleep schedule. My sleep schedule is so off. I'm very much a night owl. I don't like waking up early, but I know it's, I have to because that's when everyone is on and asking for things. And that's why a morning routine is so important and morning rituals because it creates a space and time for ease that doesn't exist between the general like nine to five hours. And then after five o'clock, my brain is just, especially if it's like a long meeting day. Right now I'm also taking courses to become a certified life coach. I'm taking mentor calls, unsupervised coaching calls. I'm going live on my um, social media platforms. I started therapy seven weeks ago. So going on two months of therapy has been a whole new experience and opening different areas of my life that have been blocked and just being able to have a safe space to talk to someone has been new but I find myself to be very exhausted after long meeting days or after therapy days it's really hard for me to get back on track and I know my agenda is in front of me but I'll just stare at it sometimes for a couple of hours or I'll go distract myself or what I like to do is clean when I'm stressed out <laughs> so when my house is extra, extra spick and span, uh, it's probably someone is either coming over, you know, or we're hosting, or I'm just really, really stressed out. And I'm trying to get back on track on back on course with what it is I actually need to get done. Um, and again, that's something I learned through therapy. So definitely another thing I like to incorporate into my day in, in life is coaching and therapy that coincide with the journaling and all the mental health and reading aspects of my life. But having worked with a coach and a therapist at the same time has been so impactful for the, in the best ways possible. I, I can't even, honestly, I can't even express the benefits both have had in my life, but also you need to be ready to, to do the work because therapy isn't the answer. It will help you to discover the answers you're looking for or work or just work through some of the issues or traumas or, or coping mechanisms you've, you know, or habits you've built up over the years and ways to whatever it is that you need to work on, right? Every Everyone's experience is, is customized to their life specifically. Like 
what my therapist tells me is not going to be the same thing that they tell you because we've had two different experiences, but I am definitely an advocate for having that external help, whether it's therapy, coaching, psychiatry, um, a gym membership, a personal trainer, a nutritionist, whatever it is that you need in your life specifically to feel free and to have fun and to feel like you again, to return to you. I think, um, these people, you know, have these skills and are there for a reason. And it's important to be able to ask for help in times of need. And you don't always have to spend money for these things either, because one of my biggest misconceptions was, okay, I'm going to have to spend so much money on therapy. I can't afford it right now. I don't even want to think about it. So for years, I kind of just ignored it. It's not that I wasn't open to getting therapy. It was more so that just the, the narratives and the misconceptions I had of it. And if I didn't add it to my calendar this year and to my big goals list, I would have not, I would have not ever gotten it done because I took the time, added it to my calendar and I said, okay, by this date, I want to start therapy. And I started doing the research. I looked into, you know, private practice and then I went through my insurance and lo and behold they had a free eight-week program which is perfect for someone that has never tried therapy and again I'm approaching week eight of doing this and getting counseled and, and being you know in therapy has been just beautiful but when you are ready just know there are free options out there through your insurance or you know a lot of these private practices will work with your budget as well. So whatever it is that you are seeking help in, please just explore your options and exhaust all options. Ask your friends, ask your family, hey, I'm looking for a personal trainer. Do you know anybody? There could be someone that's about to graduate and they need to get some unsupervised hours. So maybe they could train you. There's just a plethora of ways we can get the things we need without having to break the bank. So going back again to the mixing of the good and the consistent with the chaotic works in progress, all can exist at the same time, but it's just a matter of like, okay, what is my main focus now? What can I control? What is ultimately overwhelming me and what are my distractions? Do I need to just go be distracted for a couple of hours and then use the next eight hours? to focus and hone in. All right, then let's go do it. Let me go watch a show. Or can I flip that? Spend the next two hours doing a bunch of work, just zoning in, being locked in, dialed in. And then the next eight hours, just goof off. It's your life. It's my life. And I've done both. I've done where that have had the days where I work for two hours, I'm locked in, I'm zoned in, I'm dialed in. And the rest of the day, I don't want, I don't want to say I goof off, but there is some goofery happening <laughs> as well as just, I'm able to just put my mind into other tasks that need my attention because now I've kind of cleared this path and I've gotten the ball rolling and I feel good. I'm not so balled up and overwhelmed. There aren't that many roadblocks anymore because I zoned in, I locked in, I dialed in, but Again, of course, all of that comes with trying to find balance, who you are in these situations, what you want out of it, what is your desired outcome, right? And part of that is also doing things that are not related to work, business, right? Because, and before I get into, you know, how I care for myself outside of work, some of my daily routines and rituals with work involve a big chunk of my day. I know I gave up my nine to five, but I really do work for many hours of the day. And I know there's areas I can improve in. I could hire help. Uh, I could stop making excuses. Oh, it's not in the budget, much like with therapy. Okay, let's just take an hour out of our day, out of our schedule and really figure this out. There's apps like Fiverr, Upwork, you know, I could probably put out a Facebook post in the groups or on my feed and just ask for help. I used to be afraid to ask for help. Even with family and friends, people that I'm that I love and I'm 
super close with. It was, it took a lot for me to just admit I was in need. And I couldn't believe how long I'd gone with that mentality, right? So, you know, with that said, actually, I'm going to put this out there. Um, I think I'm going to need help with my podcast pretty soon. Either in the social media posting or and or editing. I know these are two completely different jobs, but who knows? You never know who's listening and who's willing to help me in this journey. So um, reach out if that is you or if you know somebody. Uh, let's talk. I need help. I need help in a lot of areas, but for the most part, I'm doing well and I'm maintaining and I'm just becoming more aware of where I am forcing things or where I'm holding on too tight to the outcome and not being as agile or flexible in, in the way God and the universe operates, right? So my work days can be all over the place, but I like to time block. I think time blocking has been a good guide for me, especially because I have so many different quote unquote tabs open at once. Um, but the biggest lesson I have learned is that you can do everything. You just can't do everything all at once. And focusing on one project has been the most successful strategy of them all. And even though I have all these ongoing, you know, businesses or ventures that I'm, you know, giving a try nothing's actually going to get done if I'm doing the podcast and then typing out a post for my TC community while also auditing a file while I'm recording this. No, I'm sitting here with my outline in front of me, this mic and garage band open. That's it. I'm not focused on anyone else. My phone is on silent. So for the next hour or two, it's just me and this podcast. That's it. I'm not distracted. I'm not trying to multitask because that's how things can start to fall through the cracks. And I've noticed that, all right, well, if I can split my day up, what is the one or two things that needs to happen every single day? Let's just create a time block for that so I don't get blindsided when I have to do a task for it or I get upset or resent the fact that I have to stop the momentum that I've built up with, say, the podcast. Now I have to be pulled away to go audit a file. I'm already prepared because my it was there on my calendar. I anticipated it. So even if it doesn't happen, that just means I get, you know, two hours back in my day to do other things or to go outside and gallivant. <laughs> but ultimately, how you design your day should you revolve around what are your priorities and making the time for that but also giving yourself the time in between every task to give yourself grace, to breathe, but also to anticipate this may take longer than usual. You know, it's okay. It happens. But just give yourself, you know, some space in between tasks and projects to like break away from the monotony so you aren't just working for an entire eight hour work block. I may have a two hour YouTube block on my calendar, but some days it only takes me 30 minutes to record and edit and post a video and add the description, do the thumbnail because I've be become better at it. I've built the skills and the habits that it takes to just immediately jump in and do it and not think about anything or hesitate. But in the beginning, a task like that might've taken me an hour, an hour and a half. So I'll still keep that two hour window in my calendar because I know there are the days where, okay, well, if I learn a new editing skill, I'm going to need that extra time, that buffer, that grace to just keep trying until I refine it and get better. And I don't need as much time. And I will admit, again, there have been days where I don't want to do anything, especially when it's about to be that time of the month. We all know that those that get periods <laughs> are, our emotions fluctuate. My energy fluctuates. 
my weight fluctuates. So I'm going through a lot outside of having to maintain all these calendars and these tasks and these recurring tasks, these random tasks, you know, and everything it just feels overwhelming sometimes. So I like to make a note for around the third week, you know, or the week before my cycle. Okay, don't put so much on the calendar that month. Where can we do some bulk tasks? Where can we habit stack, right? To kind of front load maybe the top of the month, then the third week, I can just kind of coast. And by the fourth week, if it's at that time, then I'm just in it. You know, I'm able to just do what I can handle, what I have the capacity for. And whether you get a cycle or not, but if you notice that your emotions tend to fluctuate or around a certain time of the month or season, even, you know, because when it's hot and cold, our energy and our emotions change throughout the season. Think of your days in terms of your energy and your emotions. Plan it around that, who you are. And of course, there are things we can't control, deadlines, close of escrows, contingency removal dates. I get it. I I absolutely get it. Some stuff, some days we're going to have to power through the pain. Some days we're going to have to work a little later than expected. We're going to have to sacrifice and miss events. But it doesn't always have to be like that. The more you integrate who you are as a person into your daily rituals and routines and expectations and tasks and projects, the more it will feel like a collaborative effort versus just someone throwing things at you all the time and you being in you and them expecting you to catch everything that's being thrown at you. It's okay to get, you know, get away from playing defense all the time. How are you showing up and playing offense, running your plays, asking for help, delegating, saying no? Remember, no is a complete sentence as well. So my work days, I have my time blocks. And as much as they are structured and I know when I'm going to work on them, again, I'm human. Things happen. Life happens. Some things will just get pushed and have to wait. And that's the reality of it. And I accept the good outcome and the bad outcome as a result of my actions. But just know, I don't ever do anything to intentionally hurt anyone or to intentionally miss a deadline. As long as I'm being communicative, clear, upfront and honest with what's going on instead of just letting things fall in the cracks on purpose then I I could sleep at night knowing I did everything in my power to say hey I can't handle this right now or of course you could frame it in a different way but you get what I mean just be honest with what you're going through in the moment whether it's good or bad especially people that want to travel because you don't always have to be sick to just say you can't do your work let's talk about travel And that's what I want to get into with how do I care for myself outside of work. For me personally, I love, love, love to travel. And the beauty of being location independent is that I can work from anywhere. But I also have those lines that are thick lines that I draw boundaries when I do travel. There are some trips where I can work and it's not really going to affect my mood or my energy. Like, oh, I have to work. And then there are the trips where I'm like, nope, I'll bring the laptop, of course, because emergencies can happen, but I am off the clock. I am not logging in unless I absolutely have to. And I detach. You know what I mean? And it's just designing your life the way you, you see it fit for you. And how I care for myself outside of work is, again, on a bigger scale, I love to travel locally nationally, internationally, whatever it is, I'm outside. I'm getting the stamps. I'm seeing people. I'm, I'm traveling. I love it. I love it. You may not see a lot of it because I just, I just do it. If it's in the budget, I make it happen. You know, again, I, I am very fortunate. I have people that work in the travel industry, that work in the hotel industry, and I've been able to just take it, take advantage of those opportunities, you know, to all of our benefit. 
because we need to spend our time outside of work enjoying it, <laughs> you know, and it may not look like traveling. It can be going to a concert or having drinks with your best friend or meeting new people, making new friends, taking naps, right? Let's not forget naps are important. Getting a good amount of sleep is important to truly caring for yourself and your wealth because exhaustion can just wipe all this away if you are not fully you at present and able to make decisions with clarity and with awareness. So how you care for yourself outside of work is just as important as how you take care of the work that is occurring during those hours. So think of things you love and how it aligns with your spirit and your energy and your personality. Do you have hobbies? Do you like watching old music videos on YouTube, right? In old, in, I love watching old interviews from back in the day. I love watching vlogs. When I'm not traveling, I'm watching other people travel on YouTube, <laughs> like for real. Because then I can get a different perspective of, of the world without even having to leave my home. And then that inspires something in me to want to go visit that place. Or if I know someone going to that place, I can say, hey, go watch this video. So-and-so went to go visit them and this is what they did. So it's like whatever you enjoy, take the time outside of work to experience those joys just as frequently as you do the work. It will make a difference in the quality of your life always keep that in mind is just how I care for myself outside of work is rooted in the quality, not the quantity. I could spend five minutes with my niece and be charged and f my cup is full overflowing for a week. Of course, I'd love more time, but I'm just saying it's like those five minutes alone impact me because there's just so much love and, and joy involved in that experience that I just needed that five minutes with her and I'm good. Or maybe I need need that five days of, of a vacation. You have the power to design how you want to care for yourself outside of work and to do it. And it doesn't have to look the same every single week or every single day. It could be quarterly. It could be monthly. But as long as you are intentional about how you're caring for yourself outside of work, I feel like your confidence will be you know, improved how you look at yourself, your goals will more likely be to be accomplished. You'll feel more inclined to take risks. I mean, there's just a lot of benefits of actually taking time to care for yourself outside of work. And there are, again, use up the free options and the paid options, whatever works best for you. Because this goes into my next topic, which is a budget does not mean you're broke. So I realized this maybe a year ago. So I embrace budgets. I love them. I think they're great. But I realized recently how the word budget holds so much power over many of us. And oftentimes the definition or the interpretation of what a budget is could, it could be misconstrued as this person is quote unquote broke. I don't even like using the word broke, but just for lack of better terms right now, a budget does not mean you're broke. So let's explore that a little bit deeper. So I'm reading, I will teach you how to be rich. And I finished reading uh, the psychology of money. I read the audio book in one day and they talk about money stories, the stories we grew up with that we were told that were programmed into our brains that we tend to live by and we don't ever question it. We don't ever change our course because that's what we learned. We often don't realize how much power we have and especially when it comes to money. Of course, I can't speak for everyone's situation, but I have been through my down times with money where I just wonder, oh my God, how am I going to pay for anything? How am I going to survive? Like I've maxed out all my credit cards. I'm in debt. I'm just like spending money like it's coming in 10 times more every month when it's not. And I've also had a point in my life where the money was flowing and I worked my butt off to get that. 
and unfortunately I did experience burnout so I've seen both sides of the coin where it's like my car is being repossessed I'm having to get that random dental procedure done in the middle of the summer so now there goes a whole new debt I never factored in or I can't even get approved for a credit card because I had spent the last decade with no debt and so afraid of getting back into debt <laughs> that when it came time for me to make an offer on a house, they ran my credit and I had no credit history. <laughs> Mind you, I work in real estate. I know how all of this works, but this last minute um, home came on the market that I was interested in. It was a below market rates home here in San Francisco. And I was like, I'm going to go for it. Let's do it. Let's get the ball rolling. And found a great lender that was available to work with me at the last minute. And he was very kind, especially when he came to telling me what happened. And he explained, you know what, for the next couple of years, or at least the next six months, start establishing your credit. It was an eye opener, you know, that, okay, all this time I thought not having any debt was a good thing, but I completely forgot about credit history and my credit report. And just having debt, but using it to my advantage. So I'm currently in, a, in that place of rebuilding that. And it's taught me that, oh, budgets don't mean that I don't have money. It just means I'm now reallocating my money to different homes that serve me. And I'm no longer throwing money at things that don't serve me. Don't get me wrong, I love being out and going out with friends and partying and doing all that, but I'm not doing it like I used to. Now it's like a lot more elevated, but it's definitely not as frequent. You know what I mean? Because I used to go out every single day and just throw money, throw money, throw money. And older me, one is tired. I am tired, I cannot keep up. I went out on Friday, it is Sunday, I am sore. I'm tired. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is the reality of having a budget, whether you are a young kid, a teen, an adult, budgets are important. It's important to know your numbers and to know where everything is going and where everything is, you know, what are you paying for? I canceled so many subscriptions. I canceled so many web virus protections that were being charged to different email accounts that I didn't even know about until they hit my accounts. And I realized like, okay, I need a budget one to keep track of my money and where things are going, what's coming in, what's going out. I need a budget to keep me on track towards my big dreams, my big goals, right? My dream life. Because if I don't, that's when I'll start to you know, veer off and get distracted and say, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's go eat dinner, out for dinner every week, every day of the week, instead of it being a treat and me feeding the account that's going towards home buying or a new wardrobe or just being a rich auntie, right? <laughs> and it was, it's through budgeting that I realized, like, it's okay to, to face the reality of your money it's okay as scary as it is it actually empowers you to know where your numbers are and to know what the psychology of money how it's impacting you what are those money stories you're still holding on to oh I can't afford this thing nine months from now oh uh, I don't want to go to dinner with friends this week because um, it's just not in the budget yes I, I hear that but I also got a random check from Wells Fargo, who's, I, I canceled my Wells Fargo accounts, I don't know, two years ago. And I got a random check from them in the mail right before I was going out to dinner with my friends for like $46. And I thought about canceling just because I was like, I don't know if this is in the budget right now, but I do want to have fun. And I do have fun money in my budget, so... 
let's just do it, right? And then boom, that $46 just shows up in my account. What? So I do believe in the power of manifestation, you know, willing things into your life and, and creating the energy and the space for these new blessings. And I definitely do not want to block my blessings. So having that abundance mindset is one thing, right? But it does require some work on your end because I need to know where every single penny is going and coming in. And especially as a business owner, it's different. It's good to have these habits when, whether you have a nine to five or a business, but especially if you are a business owner, keeping track of your numbers day in and day out, month to month, especially in a market that is so volatile, I needed to build the habits of having a budget and, and being comfortable with a budget and saying that I have a budget or something is or is not in the budget because having those bigger dreams and those bigger goals empowers me to say no to something that maybe isn't as important right now or isn't as fun for me right now. And I'm, I feel like I'm kind of going, I'm veering off into different tangents, but overall how I budget my money and how I spend my money is all to serve me ultimately and my goals and my dreams. And that can include also just how you give back to other people, how you want to help other people. But if you're someone that struggles with budgeting or maintaining your money or earning more income, it's important to tap into, you know, who you are and into in relation to certain words that you hear. You don't even have to call it a budget. You could name it something else. Have fun with it. Have fun with like your relationship and how you're rebuilding that relationship with money. It doesn't have to be serious. You don't have to follow any one person's guideline or rules, but just make sure you are taking the time out to understand, oh, this is how I got here. I no longer want to stay here. How can I get out of it? There's a snowball method. There's the avalanche method. You know, do you want to... What does your rich life look like? It could mean you just want to spend more time with family or you want to travel the world. Get specific. Again, I'm going to reference the I Will Teach You How to Re Be Rich book. I'm going to put a link in the description because every chapter has helped me improve my view of spending, the way I'm spending, and it has also validated the things that I've already implemented and automated into my life in terms of how I use my money. But I don't know. I just wanted to challenge the narrative of what a budget is and what it, you know, it has its benefits, but it's not a scary thing. It just takes patience and commitment to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I've been there. I've been on both sides. There's always a way out. And if you do have any questions or you want to work through some of this, message me. I created an email for the, the, for the show now. So you can <laughs> contact at transactioncarepodcast.com. Or if you're ready and you're committed to learning and growing in a safe space, you can also go to mytccommunity.com. Again, one-on-one -on -one coaching, if that's what you need, or consultations, it's there, it's available to you. There's also going to also going to be lessons and exercises, live Q&As available within the platform. But regardless of where you go after this episode, again, thank you for listening. If you, if you have listened this far into it, just know that you have the power to care for yourself and care for your wealth. I mean that. I don't say this just to sound clever or to have a fun slogan. When I created that slogan, I was like, it needs to hit, like it needs to resonate. When I say it out loud, I need people to go, ooh, and then start to think about their own self-care and their own wealth and how they can improve and, you know, or just do a, a quick audit. We don't always have to be improving every five minutes. Com the same, same way compound interest works, it's like compounding confidence, compounding courage, compounding action. It's like those small steps lead to bigger, bigger changes. 
And I believe that because I've done it. I've seen it work. I've seen it happen. And in those days where I'm overwhelmed, I slow down because stillness really is the move. It really is. Shout out to the Dirty Projectors for that song. But, and I definitely want to get that tatted on my arm still one of these days when it's in the budget. <laughs> but right now, a frivolous tattoo is just not aligning with, with my goals. Um, and it wouldn't be frivolous. It's intentional. I've been wanting it for years, but it's just not something that sits well with my spirit knowing that I'm currently in transition with my career, restructuring my business, what business means to me going into the second part of this decade, you know, as I work towards reaching a decade in business, I'm reprogramming, redefining, challenging the old narratives and my old money stories and working towards always being a better version of myself and giving myself grace always. So we discussed a lot in this episode. And again, I thank you for listening. If you haven't already, make sure you're following the podcast. New episodes drop every week. If you have any questions regarding anything I talked about, if you want me to elaborate on something I talked about, I definitely will and can. If you want to work with me one-on-one, visit mytccommunity.com to learn more and to join today. No pressure, of course. I'm creating all of these these things, whether it's free or paid. I just want you all to have the information. I know I'm going to survive one way or another financially. I, I really do believe in that. And the days that I do get stressed out, I have to remind myself and go back to my daily routine, my rituals, prayer, gratitude, celebrating my wins, working out, having fun. And then I'm reminded, okay, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be good. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving forward. Do the work. It's like you build it, they will come. (laughs) Again, another quote, but I live by these things. And I appreciate each and every one of you for listening. New episodes are released every Monday. Visit transactioncarepodcast.com to know exactly when new episodes drop and to stream old episodes as well. Again, I created an email for the show, contact at transactioncarepodcast.com. If you want to inquire about being on the show, uh, sponsoring an episode or maybe the newsletter, my YouTube, social media, collaborations, partnerships, whatever the case, contact at transactioncarepodcast.com. All the information will be in the description below and stay tuned. More interviews, more information, more teaching, more learning, more abundance. It's all here. Transaction Care Podcast, Transaction Care Podcast, Transaction Care, Transaction Care, Transaction Care. (laughs) Thank you all for listening. This has been another episode of the Transaction Care Podcast. My name is Lillian Hernandez, but you can call me Lily like the flower because we are learning and growing together. I'm giving you the keys. There are no gatekeepers here. Care for yourself, care for your wealth. Your time is worth it. Let's coordinate. Talk soon.